research papers are an indispensable part of your PhD journey. This is something which we have been repeatedly telling you in many of our videos. For example, just three weeks back, we had shared a video titled, What are research papers? In which we had told you how research papers are an important part of your research journey. And we had also explained where these papers are to be published in our next video, where we had spoken about what are journals and publications and also what are the top ranking publication houses. In the third video, which we had shared just last week, we had told you the relevance of reading peer reviewed journals and explained you the meaning and process of peer review. So research paper reading marks the beginning of everyone's research journey. And like everyone else, research paper reading marked the beginning of my PhD journey too, some 15 years back. However, back then, there was no concept of research papers being available online to read. We had to actually go to a library, the one that is made up of bricks and within that library scan through the various journals and research papers. During my PhD uh, work, the library that I visited the most was IIM Lucknow. Now this was a huge library with thousands of journals and lakhs of papers. It was actually a multi-story library with the journals being stored in multiple cupboards. So the problem would be, how do I understand which journal suits my requirements and where exactly is that journal located? You know, it is stored in which cupboard? To sort this problem, the library had an index or kind of an Excel sheet where uh, there would be a list of all the journals categorized by the area they belong to and also details of when they were issued, the volume, you know, uh, the, their publisher and so on. And most importantly, telling me where exactly is this journal situated within the library. Now, why are we exactly talking about libraries and the index of library? That's because using these examples, I am going to explain you today in this video, the concept of research databases and research indexes. Yes, we are going to talk about the very famous Coopers, Web of Science, PubMed, ProQuest and many more databases and indexes in this video. So in case you also want to know about all these indexes and databases, then stay tuned with your one and only PhD mentor, Dr. Ritika Gava. So this video has been divided into three sections. In the first section, we are going to talk all about databases, its meaning, its types, and also we are going to discuss a few examples of databases. In the next section, we are going to discuss what are research indexes, its meaning and its type. And in the third section, we are going to tell you why and how are indexes and research databases relevant for researchers. So now, without wasting any more time, let us start with our section one. What are databases? Databases in very simple terms can be understood as an electronic library which contains a number of journals, research papers, books or any other literature in electronic format. So they are the age old library but all with, with everything being done online. Now databases are of two types. The first one is full text databases and as the name suggests, a full text database would contain the entire journal or research paper or books which you can easily download. So you can type in your query, whatever the list of journals appear which matches your query, you can simply read it online or you can download it. 
Yes, it is quite possible that they may require you to give them some membership. Usually institutional membership is also requested. The best example of a full text database is the ProQuest Central, which is a multidisciplinary database. From here, we move on to the next type of database, which is called a bibliographic database. Now, a bibliographic database does not contain full text or full papers or journals. Rather, they have only the references other citations of the literature that they've included be it books journals or papers so using these references and citations you can retrieve the paper or journal from their original location many bibliographic databases also include along with the citation and references the abstract of the paper one of the most fam famous abstract and citation database is Scoopers. Besides Scoopers, I'm sure you've also heard of many other famous bibliographic databases like Web of Science and also IEEE Explorer or PubMed uh, database. All these are examples of bibliographic databases. So in case Scoopers is a bibliographic database, why do we say that our journal is Scoopers indexed or my paper has been published in a Scoopers index journal? If it is a bibliographic database, then how are we using the word index for it? This is exactly what I'm going to explain you in the very next section. What are journal indexing or research indexing okay so let us now understand what are journal indexes but before that let us remind ourselves of what exactly indexes are remember the beginning of our books or projects or ending of the books how do we find which chapter is located where or if we want to locate a particular word how do we locate it in a book we go to the index and over there is uh, given a list of all the contents of the books and where they can be located. Isn't this exactly what a bibliographic database is doing? It has given you a list of the journals and told you where these journals or where these research papers can be are located or from where can be re retrieved. Thus, in other words, all bibliographic databases are actually indexes only. Anything which is included in the database appears in their index and therefore we say that this is Cooper's index or Web of Science index. But why the reason why being part of this Web of Science or science, uh, Scoopers is such a big thing? Simply because Scoopers has said, I'm not going to include all the research papers that are available or all the books that are available. I am going to set a very high standard and only the books and the journals which meet these standards will be included in my database and therefore will appear in my index. And as soon as a journal or a book meets these standards, and uh, is included in their database and there's in their index we say that it has become a scoopers index journal so this is the meaning of what scoopers index or what indexing journal indexing means so uh, let me end this topic this second section by giving you a detailed definition as given by springer nature on the official website the link of which can be found in the description and also in the screen below. So they define a journal index as a journal index also called bibliographic indexes or bibliographic databases are lists of journal organized by discipline, subject or type of publication. From here we move on to the third and the final section of this video where we are going to talk about what is the relevance of indexing and databases from the point of view of researchers. Indexes like IEEE, Web of Science, PubMed, Scoopers and so on symbolizes high quality research and genuine work. So as soon as your paper is published in an index journal, it is an evidence of your research work quality and high standard. 
Similarly, when you want to ensure that you're reading a quality paper, then you should always read from an indexed journal. This is all about databases and index. Do tell me if you found this video relevant. In case you haven't already, then please do subscribe to our channel. Let us know what more do you want to learn about research journals and research. Thank you so much for watching my video.